It was claimed earlier this week that a robot learned to play ping pong in just 90 minutes, demonstrating how far artificial intelligence has progressed. However, another recent scientific accomplishment demonstrates that the human brain still outperforms artificial intelligence in at least one area, playing the video game Pong. Robots, take it or leave it. According to New Scientist, Cortical Labs researchers revealed that hundreds of thousands of human brain cells in a dish can not only learn to play Pong, but also increase their skill quicker than artificial intelligence. This new discovery is going to help researchers and scientists model our current ways of developing artificial intelligences more closely to the way biological pathways actually work. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you the amazing capabilities which these very few neurons manage to show us, in what ways researchers are going to use this knowledge, and finally, what this means for the future of the artificial intelligence industry. According to Kagan, the dish brains he and his colleagues are developing are made up of between 800,000 and 1 million live brain cells, about comparable to a cockroach brain. Some contain embryonic brain cells from mice, while others contain stem cell-derived human brain cells. Microelectrode arrays that can both stimulate and read the activity of the cells are created on top of the cells. The firing of electrodes on the left or right of one array tells the mini brain, the paddle, whether the ball is on its left or right, simulating a rudimentary version of Pong with no opponent. The proximity of the signals is indicated by their frequency. The paddle moves left or right according to certain patterns of activity throughout the neurons. The computer responds to this activity, and the mini-brains learn how to operate the paddle thanks to feedback from the electrodes. While these brains in a dish aren't as good at Pong as artificial intelligence or actual people, they do learn faster. The incredible part is how rapidly it learns, in real time in 5 minutes. That is very astonishing what biology is capable of. In my perspective, it is a quantum leap ahead. The authors have created a neural network that can both understand and respond on data from the outside environment. Our brain has over 86 billion neurons and around 100 trillion, or 1000 trillion, according to some estimates, synaptic connections. Artificial networks have a significantly smaller number of neurons, therefore comparing their numbers in this way is deceptive. Perceptrons simply receive input via their dendrites and produce output through their axon branches. A single-layer perceptron network is made up of multiple unconnected perceptrons that all do the same task at the same time. Input neurons, as many as the number of characteristics in the data, output neurons, and neurons in the hidden layers, in between, make up deep neural networks. All of the levels are generally, but not always, completely linked to the next layer, which means that artificial neurons in the preceding and next layers have roughly the same number of connections. Convolutional neural networks additionally employ a variety of strategies to extract data aspects that are more complex than what a few coupled neurons can do on their own. Manual feature extraction, changing data so that it can be fed to machine learning algorithms, necessitates human brain capacity, which is overlooked when calculating the number of neurons needed for deep learning jobs. The size constraint isn't merely computational. Increasing the number of layers in artificial neurons does not necessarily result in better machine learning results. The technique of training taken by Kagan and his colleagues is based on Friston's free energy concept, which describes how the brain operates. The underlying premise is that even neurons in a dish will attempt to construct an internal representation of their surroundings. They don't like being startled, therefore they want to know what will happen in terms of what inputs they will receive. According to Kagan, this is why the cells engage in the game. Their inputs become more predictable as they play. He claims that if people don't play, they will be subjected to unpleasant random input. The sentient activity that arises unchecked from this setup is astonishing. Improved machine learning and drug testing, to observe how experimental medications influence the brain, are two possible applications for the researchers' findings. On average, biological neurons fire roughly 200 times every second. Signals travel at various rates, ranging from 0.61 meters per second to 119 meters per second, depending on the kind of nerve impulse. Signal travel speeds can differ based on a person's sex, age, height, temperature, medical condition, lack of sleep, and other factors. In biological systems, information is transmitted by the firing frequency or firing mode, 
photonic or burst firing, of the output neuron, as well as the amplitude of the incoming signal in the input neuron. Synaptic weights, which are continuous, floating point number values, are used to carry information in artificial neurons. The speed with which feedforward or backpropagation algorithms are constructed has no bearing on the model's execution or training time. Artificial neural networks don't have refractory periods, times when it's impossible to send another action potential because the sodium channels are locked shut, and artificial neurons don't get fatigued. They're just functions that can be calculated as many times and as quickly as the computer architecture allows. Because artificial neural network models can be thought of as a series of matrix operations and derivatives, they can be highly optimized for vector processors, doing the same calculations on large numbers of data points over and over, and sped up by orders of magnitudes using GPUs or dedicated hardware, like on AI chips in recent smartphones. These bots appear to be alive, therefore it's worth considering how we define life. Life, according to NASA, is a self-sustaining chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution, albeit this definition may be disputed by certain experts. Those biological robots are stem cells that behave in lifelike ways, but they are not alive. They're indifferentiated stem cells, which implies they don't have a specific function. They also don't act like a regular creature, which may explain why their method of reproduction is unlike anything observed in nature. We still don't know how the brain learns or how redundant connections store and retrieve data. Synapses may strengthen or weaken depending on their value, and brain fibers expand and extend out to connect to other neurons. Neuroplasticity allows new connections to be formed or regions to shift and alter function. Neurons that fire at the same time form a network. We build on knowledge that has previously been stored in the brain as we learn. Our knowledge grows via repetition and sleep, and things that formerly took concentration may now be completed automatically once learned. Artificial neural networks, on the other hand, have a preset model that can't have any more neurons or connections added or removed. During training, only the weights of the connections may be changed. The networks start with random weight values and work their way up to a point where further weight modifications don't increase performance. There is no assurance that the weights of the network will be the best possible arrangement of weights to a problem. Just as there are many solutions for the same issues in real life, they will merely represent one of the infinite approximations to infinite answers. Learning is the process of determining the best weights to minimize the disparities between the network's expected and generated output. Adjusting weights one way would increase the error, while changing them the other way would lower it. Imagine a misty mountain top where the only thing we could discern was that taking a step in one way would lead us downhill. We would soon reach a valley if we kept repeating this process, and any additional steps would only lead us higher. When we find this valley, we might declare we've arrived at a local minimum. It's worth noting that we may have overlooked additional, better valleys that are much lower from the mountain summit, global minima, since we couldn't see them. Gradient descent is the process of doing this in more than three dimensions. Instead of going through each and every example each time, random samples, batches, from the data collection are picked and utilized for training iterations to speed up the learning process. This is merely an approximation of how to alter the weights to attain a local minimum, identifying which path to go downhill without always looking in all directions, but it's a reasonably reasonable approximation nevertheless. When rising to the summit, we can take greater steps and then smaller ones when we approach a valley where even slight nudges could send us in the wrong direction. Stochastic gradient descent refers to walking downhill at a faster pace than meticulously planning each and every step. So, while the pace at which artificial neural networks learn might alter over time, decreasing to assure higher performance, there are no periods when the networks learn better, analogous to human sleep phases. Although GPUs warming during training might affect performance, there is no brain fatigue. The weights of an artificial neural network can be exported and utilized to solve problems similar to those in the training set once it has been trained. Backpropagation using an optimization approach like stochastic gradient descent across many layers and examples is incredibly costly, while utilizing a trained network, just executing feedforward computation, is insanely inexpensive. Even if our own intellect inspired artificial intelligence, progress in the subject helps biologists and psychologists better comprehend intelligence and evolution. When modeling agents, for example, the limits of some learning processes become obvious, like how evolution must be more complex than just random mutation. 
Scientists used to assume that the brain had highly specialized neurons for vision that get increasingly complicated as they become more capable of detecting increasingly complex forms and things. However, it is now obvious that artificial neurons of the same type may learn complicated shapes by letting other, similar neurons acquire less complex forms and attributes and then determining if these lower-level representations are communicating. So, what is your opinion on this rather new discovery which is shedding some light on the ways in which our biologic drastically outperform artificial neurons? Do you believe that artificial neurons, whether they're hardware or software-based, will ever match our biological ones? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.